in most cases, we have a mix of euphotic and oligophotic production. So a more realistic curve would be something like this. And then if you pair this curve with a hydraulic competence curve, which is the same competence curve that we've used, by the way, these curves are specific to every location. So this is just an, a theoretical curve as an example. Well, what you end up having is a complex setting in carbonates where the reef represent mostly sediment in situ that were formed in situ and were not transported by the, um, by the wave action because they are above the hydraulic competence line. In fact, that's the function of the reef again is to break the waves and not be uh, transported so the corals can live in that shallow water. But then as we go towards the slope, we see that we have a significant portion of carbonates that are transported and redeposited from the shallow water where they were produced. Most of the production, if you pay attention to those production curves, most of the production here is in the shallow water, but a lot of that produced sediment is transported to the slope and eventually transported for the finest material to the basin uh, or the shallow basin. So you can see here how these, um, these two things impact really the sediment transport and deposition of the different geometries. And this is really important because if you look at the um, history of carbonate producers, the producers of carbonates have changed through time, significantly changed through time. So this here shows you the um, different you know, known carbonate producers. Not all of these are reef producers, by the way, this is just a general figure of reef producers. And the thickness of the line shows how abundant they were. And you can see that things actually do change from the Precambrian all the way to, to uh, today. So let's take as an example the stromatolites. It's really obvious that stromatolites were dominant in the Precambrian and the Paleozoic, but they are now not so abundant and not so important since the Ordovician. And if we want to contrast this with something, we can look at corals. Corals did not exist between the Precambrian all the way to the Ordovician. They were actually quite abundant in part of the Earth's history. So let's say in the Paleozoic, they're quite abundant, but they tend to disappear at the end of the Permian with the Permian mass extinction and then reappear sometime in the Jurassic, but they're not so abundant in the Cretaceous because in the Cretaceous, we have rudists that dominate in the reef assemblages. And of course, in the modern world, corals dominate our, our reefs. The point I'm making here is that the reef organisms have changed. And because reef organisms have changed, the depth at which the reef is produced has changed as well. And that has an impact on the distribution of sediment. So evolution plays a big role in controlling this. And this is really evident here by looking at the equilibrium profile of different shelves through time. So if we look at the modern reefs, most of the production is really in the shallow water. And we tend to have those flat top platform with the reef all the way to sea level, literally at sea level. You can, you know, maybe within a meter of sea level. But if we look at Devonian platforms, uh, such as the ones we have in the Canning Basin, we tend to have production slightly deeper because it's dom dominated by stromatoporoids. So you have a bit of a, a slight slope to your shelf. Your shelf is not completely flat. And then you have this really big reef, the black part, with a very steep sided geometry plunging into the basin. And that has to do with the production profile of these uh, particular sediments and the hydraulic competence of the particular area where they grow, of course. And the reason we're here in the Permian Basin is because I think this is one of the most beautiful area to look at a Permian reef. You literally can see the geometry of the reef. And you can see from the Pomar example here that production in the Permian was complex. You had high production at the surface, mostly by photozoans, which actually tended to be in, in this particular shallow area, tended to be either algal deposits or um, large foraminifers, benting foraminifers. 
Um, and then you had a second spike in production much deeper, maybe at 50 meters, 80 meters. And this is actually where the Permian Reef was located. We'll have a chance to look at this in more detail in a future class, but the reef was actually much deeper in that depositional profile. And what's fascinating is that at the outcrop, you can see this. You can see this profile still preserved because in the Guadalupe mountain area, after deposition of the carbonates, you had deposition of the evaporite, an evaporite seal that is now eroded. And so we have that erosion has preserved the carbonate. And so we can still look at a shelf to basin, including all the detailed geometry of the uh, carbonates at that particular area, as you can see in this footage. And I, to me, this is, this is really beautiful. So that brings me to my summary. What did you learn during this class? Well, we've seen that carbonates can show a continuum of geometries. We've also seen that the, um, the equilibrium profile is controlled by the hydrodynamic regime of the, uh, the particular setting in which you deposit these, um, these carbonates and the grain size that are being produced and at what water depth those grains are being produced. So these are two important controls. What controls grain size and where they're produced are, of course, the biota themselves, so the producers. And ultimately, this is what impacts the geometry of your carbonate system. I should add that, of course, cementation, as we've mentioned previously, is also another big uh, contributor to why you can have steep sided geometries. But all things being equal, if you are in a T factory, these two things, the hydrodynamic dynamic regime and the top of biota that form your T factory are the main dominant control on your ultimate geometry. In our next class, we'll look at the carbonate platforms and the type of faces you can expect on those platforms. Yeah.